In this lesson, we're going to return to the idea of average and instantaneous rates of change. The only difference is now we're going to introduce the concept of limits in finding these. Now, first of all, we're going to define a secant line. A secant line is when we're crossing a line more than one place. Now, we might be using this secant line to estimate the rate of change at a given point. So, in this one, we're using these two points to define uh, to compute the average rate of change over this time. Now, this would simply be a matter of taking my endpoints, 340 minus 150 over our change in x's. And that's going to be about 8.636. Now note they rounded that to 9 flies per day because we look at our units, our units of wire flies, our x-axis is days, so we're thinking flies per day. Now if we think about, uh, if we're looking for an instantaneous rate, we can be looking at bringing these cl points closer and closer to the point that we want to know about. So if we want to know about day 23, we bring our rates of change closer and eventually our line starts to look more and more like a tangent line or the line that's actually just touching that in one place. A tangent line really is defined by the motion's path at a certain time. So maybe if I'm swinging a ball in a circle, if I let go, the motion's path would cause it to keep going in a straight direction, would not continue to go in the circle. So that's our tangent line, because at the moment the point is at here on the circle, its direction is actually going this way. As a consequence, it's only going to touch that circle once. So when we're thinking about instantaneous speed, we're thinking about a graph where we're dealing with time and distance. And so the slope of this tangent line is going to give us our velocity. So the definition of slope at a curve then, remember we were taking our h as getting closer and closer to zero. So from now on we're going to be doing these finding instantaneous rates using limit as h approaches zero. So here's the problem looking at the slope in terms of the tangent line or really the slope at an instant on a curve. So this first part, find the slope of the curve at x equals a. This is just saying we have a general point a uh, that we're plugging into this. And so if we want to find the slope m, we look at it in terms of that formula, limits h approaches 0. We take our function and plug in a plus h minus, and we plug in just a, and this is all, as always, over h. To simplify this equation, we'll need to have a common denominator. So if I multiply by a over a, a plus h a plus h. We'll basically have a minus a plus h all over a times a plus h. And I'm going to move my denominator up here times 1 over h. If I subtract now, a minus a is gone, leaving me with a negative h on top. I still have this h over here, which will also cancel out. I do need to keep rewriting this limit, even though it may seem tedious. It is important to be accurate. And actually, at this point, I can go ahead and plug in. Uh, up here, this is now negative 1. On the bottom, I have a times, if I plug in my limit of 0, I'll end up with negative 1 over a squared. So my slope of my curve is just in general negative 1 over a squared for a slope. Now to answer part b, I want to know where the slope is equal to negative 1 fourth. So I just take my slope with using keeping that a in there, but I set it equal to negative 1 fourth, which means a squared is equal to 4, or we're looking at a at positive or negative 2. Now, really they ask where it's happening, so we're not looking for A, we want both an X and Y point for this. Or maybe there's multiple solutions for this because we have that plus or minus. In order to do that, I'm going to need to know the value of Y at those points, so I need to look at F of negative 2 and F of 2. So plugging in those values, we're going to get 
uh, negative one half and one half. Our two points where this will happen are negative two, negative one half, and two, one half. Now in part C, we're asked to generalize what happens as we plug in different values, so maybe larger values of A or numbers closer to zero. Since it's squared, we can think on both the positive and negative side. If we're getting close to zero, for one thing we should notice that our slope is always going to be negative, but as we're close to zero, this number is going to get larger and larger. Our slope is going to be very steep. But again, negative going down. If we're getting further away, we're going to be uh, going more and more, get basically getting closer to the horizontal. We're approaching a zero slope. The next topic is a normal to a curve. Now, a normal to a curve looks at the tangent line and then it finds the line that is perpendicular to that at the point of tangency. So if this question asks what's happening at the point 2, 4, we have a tangent line passing through 2, 4, and the normal line must also pass through 2, 4. So if we want to find the tangent to the normal line, we're basically looking for the inverse of the slope. Okay, so a perpendicular slope, if our original one was A over B, we're looking at negative B over A. So our goal is in finding the normal line for an equation like this at a specific point, and they need to give us a specific point, is to first find the, uh, find the tangent line, or the slope of the tangent line. So we use our slope formula here, which in this case is going to give us plugging directly into our function here, starting with 1 plus h squared minus 4 minus 1 squared, all divided by h. Simplifying this, this is going to come to negative 2 minus h squared over h, and those h's are going to cancel out leaving us with a negative 2 minus h. It's at that point that we can take the limit and we end up with simply negative 2. Now that's our first step. We've just found the slope of the tangent line. But we want the slope of the normal line. So slope of the normal line again is the negative reciprocal so we would get a one-half for that. To find this, the equation for the normal line then, it's probably easiest to use our point-slope form. But to do that, we're going to need to know the point for y. We already know that we're looking at x equals 1, but we need to know y. So we just plug x into the equation. 4 minus 1 squared gives us 3. That tells us y equals 3. And so to find the equation of this, looking at the point 1, 3, we found our slope of our normal line to be one half and x minus one, which will simplify to one half x minus five over two. Now this is going to go back to our original question of how fast is the vehicle moving at an instant when we're now going to be using limits to solve these. And I want to see limits in your problems when you're solving instantaneous rates of change from now on.